Hi guys and thank you for choosing Conservation Chat UK Limited and welcome to your recording of our recent webinar. Just to let you know we host around 50 events a year and you can find all of them by searching our Eventbrite page. So we do in-person conferences, workshops, webinars and lots of other things. You can also check out our social media, our YouTube especially where you can join us on our adventure. So thanks once again and enjoy this webinar. Okie dokie then guys, it's five past seven so we're going to make a start. So thank you for joining me this evening for an introduction to the Busking Sharp um, and thank you for joining a Conservation Chat UK event. Like always, I'm going to keep my camera off just to keep the internet connection nice and smooth uh, and hopefully you'll enjoy learning about Busking Sharks with me. So before we get into the talk, let's let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Laura and I'm co-founder and director of Conservation Chat UK and Conservation Chat UK is an events business run by me and my husband Stu and we create webinars, workshops, conferences, um, all of which where conservation is at the heart. We started this business because we want to bring conservation to every household and inspire people to take action in their own lives. I'm also co-founder and lead researcher of a little project called Operation Cetacean. And this is a growing research and conservation project based in Torbay, where I'm based, um, which focuses primarily on the study of harbour porpoises, um, which is a local cetacean, um, and how anthropogenic factors or human-induced factors such as marine vessel traffic impacts the species. I've always had a passion for our oceans and since a very young age I've been fascinated with marine animals ever since I can remember really. I also have an honours degree in animal conservation science from the University of Plymouth and for my nine to five day job I teach practical animal care at our local college. So everything I do is pretty much surrounded or intertwined with wildlife, animals and conservation. So the basking shark is the second largest shark in the world and the second largest fish in the world as well. And this is directly after the whale shark. Now, the basking shark is uh, one of three um, plankton eating shark species, along with the whale shark and the mega mouth shark. And you can see the basking shark um, on the top right of your screen, followed by the mysterious mega mouth on the bottom right, with that huge mouth, and then the beautiful whale shark on the bottom left. So let's have a look at distribution and habitat of this species. So the basking shark actually inhibits um, all oceans of the world, but apparently preferred subpolar seas. They also prefer the cold and temperate waters of continental shelves. And these huge, huge fish can travel as far south as the equator and dwells into warmer waters. The habit of the basking shark changes according to food availability, and they will go to coastal areas to feed. And once winter begins, they migrate to cold water areas. Basking sharks have an upper depth limit of zero metres and a lower depth limit of 1,264 metres. Now, according to the IUCN Red List, the basking shark is classed as endangered and their population is unfortunately decreasing. And unfortunately, we don't know how many mature individuals there are in the world, which can make predictions harder to make with regards to their populations and conservation status. However, conservation sites have been identified for this species over part of its range. It's included in international legislation and it's subject to international management and trade controls. So now we're going to focus in on a little bit of biology for this incredible shark species. So the basking shark truly is colossal and once were known to reach lengths of up to 20 metres. However, 
Due to past over-exploitation, specimens today usually fall between six to 10 meters in length, um, as individuals are less likely, <coughs> excuse me, to reach their maximum age. A fully grown basking shark can weigh up to 20 tons and its dorsal and pectoral fins can uh, each reach two meters in length. Newborn pups are usually around 1.7 meters in length. So starting from the head, let's have a look at the anatomy or physical features of the basking shark. They have a greatly enlarged mouth and a pointed snout. Their eyes are large and black and their eyesight is thought to be fairly poor. They have highly modified gill rakers. Now gill rakers in fish are bony, are um, cartilaginous um, fingers that project from the gill arch and are involved in suspension feeding on tiny prey. And basking sharks have large triangular dorsal fins, so that's the fin on the top. Um, and as I mentioned before, these can actually reach two meters in length. The coloration is typically grayish brown, black, or a dark blue on their dorsal region. So that's on top of their bodies. And they have a triangular adipose fin and a crescent shaping caudal fin. The underside or ventral side have an anal fin and a pelvic fin and this region of the shark is usually more of a white or light grey colour. This animal also has huge pectoral fins reaching two metres in length. So a female basking shark uh, reaches sexual maturity at around 20 years old. Um, usually when they reach lengths of between 4.6 to 6.1 meters. Now males, however, reach sexual maturity sooner, um, around 12 to 16 years of age. And this species of char uh, shark is thought to live for at least 50 years, um, but could potentially live for several decades. So basking sharks are ovoviviparous. I always struggle with that word. Um, and this means that they produce their young by means of eggs, which are hatched inside the body of the mother. Um, and the mother give birth to live young rather than lay eggs like other species of shark. Fertilization is internal and embryos develop within the mother's body in a yolk sac. There is no placental attachment. It's very uh, likely that unborn babies practice oophagy. And this means that embryos feed on eggs produced by the ovary while still inside the mother's uterus. And gestation lasts one year, but can be extended to two to three years. And males have a breeding season between May and July. Now, while the basking shark is the second largest shark in the world, it actually feeds on some of the smallest organisms. They feed on tiny copepods that are usually around the size of a grain of rice. And basking sharks tend to aggregate where there's a lot of zooplankton and they rely on the pressure of the passing water to push suspended prey through its gill rakers. These animals are reliant on the guidance of its large olfactory bulbs to detect food in the water. So now that we had a little look at basking shark biology, let's look closely at the behaviour of this huge oceanic fish. Now, unfortunately, we still know very little about the elusive basking shark, except for some information obtained from observations taken in the wild. Something we do know is that they spend a lot of time feeding under the sun or basking, hence where they get their name, basking shark. In fact, its English name, basking shark, means taking the sun. This species prefers to feed in surface waters, um, where generally there's abundant plankton, uh, and generally they're a slow moving animal. The basking shark is a relatively social animal, forming small groups divided according to sex. Sometimes um, they, can, they can form schools of up to 100 individual members. <laughs> 